And you're watching Inspirational Sounds. We continue with stellar highlights with Yolanda Adams, Tamala Mann, and the legendary, and I do mean legendary, Miss Tremaine Hawkins. Take a look. Listen to this, and this is what my dad taught me. Coach, I mean, yes, Coach Adams. Never find yourself unready for the blessing that God can instantly give you. He was a track coach. He was a football coach. He coached basketball as well. So there are things that we learned from my dad, like stay ready. You ain't got to get ready if you stay ready. Learn to pivot because life will change. We found that out 15 months ago. Learn how to pivot and pivot with grace. Because every time you pivot, God has something on the other side of that pivot so much better than the previous space that you were in. And then always run in stride. When you're a runner, I'm a runner. And after about 35, 40 minutes, I get into my stride and I can run all day but it's getting to that 40 to 45 minutes that's the hardest. But that's the, that's the time when you find out what's really in you. Are you gonna go the extra mile? Are you gonna do what God says? I mean, that's pretty much what we're doing here. Are you doing what God says? Are you gonna give up just before you know that something better is on the other side of that 41.55 seconds? I was poor, didn't have anything, but I kept working at my gift. I kept working at my gift, even in my local area. Of course, it was church, it was free. I could go there, so it's like I did that over and over and time and time again. But I loved it so much that I didn't just forsake my gift just to do something else that other people wanted me to do. I stayed with what I loved, my first love, which was the Lord and singing. And you can make it. I mean, it's, it's, it's no matter what it looks like, don't take no for an answer, and you, you, the sky's the limit. You can do it. Just want to, to say to, to young people, uh, you know, just be grounded, you know, in the word and, 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 uh, be patient. Uh, I, I say there's no 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 story. It's been 53 years since I've been singing gospel music, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love this music, and um, and I just know that in times like these, we need this music, don't we? As a country, you know, and so we we've got to be bold with it, you know, um, and, 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 and we've got to be sensitive, always listening to what God is saying first. And if he says, wait, you wait. And if he says, proceed, you proceed, you know, and if he says, be patient, be patient because what is for you, you know, I'm a witness. You just hold on to God. He'll bless you with it. Hey everyone, I'm Keandra Lockett, and you're watching Inspirational, Inspirational,
have the group Zyel, who is being uh, geared as the next Clark sisters. <laughs> and you look a little like Kiki. Everybody says that, don't they? Jill Scott, man. Oh no, you look a little bit like Kiki. <laughs> well, you do look a little bit like me. And Karen. Yeah. And Kiki. <laughs> Christina. You look like Christina. Thank you. That's why I think you're I, yeah. Where are your license? Never mind, take off the glasses. Where are your license? I am Christina. Christina. Okay. This is actually a full circle moment for me because I actually was singing in a group called Zyel and uh, we used to sing their music and we tributed them and all of that good stuff. And then to have this full circle moment to come back and be able to be a part of their film and to be able to be a part of uh, anything that they have going on right now is absolutely amazing. It's incredible. You all have to imagine how many women tried out for these roles. So um, it wasn't just myself. And uh, I'll just tell y'all this, my audition tape got lost. It got lost. And so then uh, my management, thank God for my managers, uh, they sent it back out and they were like, uh, yeah, so she's Twinkie. And so <laughs> probably about uh, 14 hours later after they recovered my audition, they called me and said, can you be in Canada in two weeks? So this is a God thing for sure. Don't look at me, look at Jesus. Yeah, um, I make mistakes, you know, um, even in my, my business dealings, you know, I, I've made some mistakes and had to grow and learn from that. But the only one that pointed me to what was right was, was God, you know. And so um, I think that if we stop comparing ourselves, stop looking at other artists and other, um, other entrepreneurs and look to God for the answer, you know, we're on a better road. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Praise God for another day and for another privilege and opportunity to share with you the living Word of God. Hi, I'm Jackie Sanders and you're watching Inspirational Sounds. We're so happy that you've joined us today. We have guest Dr. Betty Price and her daughter, Angela Evans. And so we're talking today about the late great Frederick Casey Price, pastor, father, husband, grandfather. And so we're going to look at it from the perspective of his daughter, Angela, and she's going to share with us just some wonderful memories of her dad and how you're honoring him on a regular basis now that he's not with us anymore. Well, my, my father um, was sort of everything to me. Uh, we were the best of friends. Um, my siblings tease me mercilessly about being a daddy's girl. They, they, they do little, you know, uh, they act out little uh, scenarios and, and they, they make fun of me, but it's okay because, and I own it and, and, and it's okay because he was an amazing father. He was the quintessential father, husband, uh, grandfather, great grandfather, friend, pastor, man of God, um, human. He was just amazing. I'm working on something super major uh, with regard to uh, trying to uh, preserve his legacy in yes. the, in the um, uh, shape of a, uh, I'm calling it the Apostles Library, but what it'll do, it'll commemorate his life and his ministry. It will house uh, memorabilia mm. uh, from his life. I found his um, first sermon notes. Oh, wow. I mm. had never seen them. I don't know if mommy knew they were there. Mm -hmm. I was in his office yeah, rum yeah. rummaging through some things and I was like, OMG, look at this. Mm -hmm. So that that was pretty amazing. But then, you know, his, his a vast library of, of audio uh, and video uh, messages and um, so it, it'll just commemorate again his life and ministry and I think it'll be a blessing to the body of Christ. I myself was also one of uh, the stewards who watched your dad mm -hmm. you know Sweet. on a regular basis yeah. and learned so much from him um, with the word. I remember uh, my husband and I talking and, and saying that we were getting meat 
it wasn't milk. We're now getting meat. Yeah. And, and we would sit, we'd get the kids and we'd gather around and we'd get our Bibles and our, our notepads and we'd be watching yeah. your dad. So uh, I've said this before, in, in my opinion, he was just like, he was straight out of the Bible in modern time and in, in, in human form. But he could have very well have been in the Bible like, like Elijah um, or Samuel, Paul, you know, anyone in the Bible. I agree. He, he very well could have been because when he spoke, the word that he spoke was so anointed that it was like it came from God himself. He had his priorities, you know, in right. Order. Absolutely. He said the, 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 um, the church came after family. And so he did not put it before us. He didn't put the congregation before us. Yes. It was all about us. And so that's, that's the life that we lived. And so he was a good father. He was determined to be the very best and, and mission accomplished, I would say, overwhelmingly. Mm -hmm. Um, he spent time with us. He, um, he, it, and he was real. He didn't hammer, uh, us over the head with with the Bible he lived it out and we saw it he modeled it for us and mm. so that was more powerful than him saying than any hey, words you know, this is what the Bible says and this is what you should be doing and mm. all of that it was that was just who they were our mm -hmm. parents were you know living epistles this brings back all those wonderful memories tons of them yes. absolutely uh, treasured memories um, precious memories it was amazing and that's shared by a lot of people will be watching today uh, a lot mm -hmm. of people felt the same way about your dad they he did. was very revered and, and that's one of the reasons why I felt we needed to do this tribute, this segment as so, a tribute. So, so you. We appreciate uh, it. Because, you know, I know he was honored and, and revered in, in life, but he also uh, uh, deserves to be honored and revered now as well. I agree. So, 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 <laughs> no, you thank you so that. much. Yes. Oh, we're thank so you. grateful. Really we're so thank grateful. You. Thank you. With uh, the pandemic, um, being here, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that the numbers will change and so forth. But there are a lot of people out there that are fearful mm -hmm. um, and they're scared yes. of, of mm -hmm. um, the coronavirus. And some people have suffered loss. Some people are afraid of suffering loss. Um, if you had a word of encouragement um, for these people that are watching today, um, what would it be? And I, I, I direct that question to you both. You first, Angela. Okay. Um, I would say to uh, people of God, especially, but to, to anyone, um, educate yourself and uh, get the proper information. Ask the Father for wisdom and guidance regarding uh, doing what you need to do to protect yourself and your family. Um, mm -hmm. I strongly recommend it. And as a family that's been hit hard, I mean hard by COVID, um, I just admonish you to do that. Oh, I don't think I could add much more to that. I, like I say, I'll just bring in the God part. I love my scripture that people have to really believe God is talking to them through the word. And there's no scripture better than trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yes. True. Lean not to your own understanding because you can't understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. But in all your ways, they acknowledge him and he will direct, direct your path. Him. This is what I pray about all the victims that have been victims of this pandemic, mainly that God send forth laborers to minister Jesus to them. And once they get Jesus and receive him like they should, that's the only help that's really can help them now. Yes. They can't figure that this out themselves. So Absolutely. again, it's in God's hand. What do you want people to remember most about your dad? I would like people to remember that Frederick Casey Price, apostle, pastor and teacher was one of the most amazing humans to ever walk planet Earth. Yes. Um, he was a man of integrity. I mean, absolute integrity, um, impeccable. I mean, uh, a man of his word, uh, a man of the word, the word of God. He taught it with, I mean, doggedly. This, this, my daddy, oh my God. Um, just a, a just a beautiful human being the most amazing fa uh, a father the amazing most amazing husband mm -hmm. he
he took care of my mother and treated her like a queen, a black man in America. <laughs> um, he raised his family. He loved his family. He doted on his family. He pr protected his family. He provided for his family. Um, he was just an amazing pastor and spiritual leader. Um, he was a trailblazer, a pace setter, a trend setter. Um, I could go on and on. The late, great Frederick K. C. Price. Today we honor him. Thank you so much, Angela. Thank you, Thank you so much, Dr. Price. Thank you. Precious. I like to call you Dr. Betty. <laughs> right. You can call me Betty. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. She's not pretentious. Very precious yes. family. Yes. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for all that you've shared with us. Absolutely. Over the years, because you had to share him right. with all of us. Right. So thank you. It was our duty. Right. <laughs> it was a blessing because you're it was. sharing the most important thing in life. Yes. <laughs> God. Yes. I'm Capri Williams, here with the wonderful Quentin Sanders, here on Youth in Motion, where we will give you the, the word, word of, of the, the day. day. Hmm, so what's the word, Capri? Well, Quentin, the word of the day is from Psalms chapter 30, verse 5, where it states, For his anger may last a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may occur at night, but rejoicing will come in the morning. Wow. I like that. Really? Yeah. As we go through life, we experience many ups and downs, but trouble don't last always. It's just for a season. If you are going through something, turn to God and he will deliver. This is for those dealing with depression, anxiety, unemployment, sickness, the despondent, and the discouraged. Remember, God will always make a way. You just have to trust him. I'm Danny Glover, and you're watching Inspirational Sounds. Now, Mr. Glover, you are well known for your roles in movies like Lethal Weapon as Murtaugh, mm -hmm. Predator, which is one of my favorites, The Color Purple, Witness, Dream Girls, Jumanji, The Next Level, and it goes on and on and on. To what do you attribute that success in the industry? I think, Jackie, one, one of the things that, that, that happened to me is, uh, I, I think I saw, I began, I began as an activist, uh, born into the movement, the civil rights movement, as a student movement, uh, where at San Francisco State, we went on strike for five months, uh, not simply to initiate the founding of a black studies program, but we ended up building coalitions with Hispanic, uh, Asian American, uh, Native American, American of First Nation people and progressive whites to have the most successful strike that brought about a school of ethnic studies. And we, the we first hear... The first one in the country. No, the the first, first, one, country. first one in the country and still the only one. We hear about things, uh, things we hear and I write these in about the 1619 Project and the attack on the 1619 Project. You know, or, of critical race theory. Those are the things that we, we were trying to talk about and hope we were able to talk about within the context of this School of Ethnic Studies. It's just simply just didn't have a simple response to the process of what is happening to us, what is happening to us now, and its relationship to the past. And and, and how how we have to understand those in different and different ways. As, as, and, and that the first way is by telling the truth. James Baldwin said, when we cannot tell ourselves the truth about our past, yes. we become trapped in it. I've all, I came through movement that that, a child of the civil rights movement, a child of the movements after that, and all the movements have, the anti-apartheid movement 
you know, if I had not been in movement and I worked in city government uh, and the Office of Community Development and the Model Cities uh, 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 program in San Francisco for, for six and a half years before I decided I was going to become a town. All those are part of my resume, but they're about a movement and growing and, and, and listening and being a part of the struggles that people, whether they're labor, wherever they are, wherever they are for social justice, wherever they are, whether they're against the death penalty or whether it was in mass incarceration, I'm a product of movements. Yeah. And, and that is the reason why I, I, I think, I, I feel that I came to acting. As an actor, what did you find to be the most challenging part of, of, of becoming a successful actor and, and how has your faith helped you uh, in order to 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 go through with it and 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 overcome these these obstacles. Well, there's there several things. You overcome fear. I mean, at some level, some people are gifted enough that they does not. And some people have a way of dealing with their fear. I've, I've heard of great great actors who, before they went on stage, they had to go in the bathroom and and everything had to come up out of their stomach. And for them to do that, great actors, so, some, some you wouldn't believe, that's what their story. But we overcome that sense. Uh, there, there's a sense of feeling that uh, you, it, and it's humbling in a sense, that you, ha you have something to give. You know, you have something to give by the virtue of the fact that you can live inside of a story, inside of a character, inside of that, and that faith that you can, whatever's going to happen, you're going to, you're going to transcend all the other obstacles around here, internal, the in terms, and including those internal obstacles you have, in order and bring life to that, you know, and then, and then at the same time, throw it away, because the, the you're going to have to do it the next night, <laughs> and you can't think about, you can't think about. What, what was happening the past night and how good you were, or how good you felt in the past, the last night, because you have to think about what the next moment. You have to start from square one from that point in time. It's like it's the first time that you heard the words on that stage at 8.05 when the curtains go up and somebody says something to you or you speak, it's the first time you ever said it. All those things you have to put into some sort of framework. That thing. And overcoming all the kind of obstacles to do that has, has been uh, um, 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 one of it. I mean, one, one of the, I think, one of the challenges. And then the feel, feeling that, that, yes, you're blessed to be able to do that. Not everyone can do that, you know. And, and whatever we call success, but you would, you feel blessed the first time that you're able to do that. And somebody says, you, you, you made me, you brought something out in me through your performance in that. Want to do it? Hey, you guys still there? Oh, I see you. Quentin Sanders here. And we're back. Today is Gospel Music Video of the Week. And I have today for you, Corinne Harthorne. Won't he do it?
Enjoy that? I mean, Corinne is like the best. Hmm. I guess that's all for today, huh? Till next time.